Today, instead of reviving four wheels, it's gonna be two with this old bicycle, and I bet it's gonna go flawless. Dang it. Perfection. I've taken an ADD sabbatical from my normal projects that don't start to work on, well, something else that's garbage. But I'm gonna take that same energy and probably attention span and apply it to this bicycle we got off Facebook Marketplace for $40. <laughs> Sounds like a great deal for them. I figured we need a backup, backup, backup daily driver around here. If I can't keep all this fleet of project cars running, we gotta have one more thing that doesn't rely on engine. Unfortunately, the wide white wall tires that came on this bike they only lasted about 30 seconds. Probably just some cosmic way of the world paying me back for constantly disappointing my wife in 30 second intervals. And now that we've got some fresh rubber on it, it's time to take it for a test drive and see what's wrong with it. I'm just gonna mount you there on the handlebars and okay, it's a little, uh, yeah, you really gotta, you really gotta pedal. Just feel like you're clawing through sand, maybe sea urchins. Oh, something's not right there. And I, I think we got one gear. Uh, nothing is, nothing's moving on the shifter. So, uh, oh, this is the gear that we needed. Just out for a nice bike ride on a totally unsafe for the road bike. Just taking all the beautiful sights in. Man, it is beautiful out. Positive number one, we didn't die. Positive number two, this fender's mounted really well. <laughs> Unfortunately, that pretty much concludes the list of positives. Now to the negatives. Since this bike has clearly been left outside for an extended period of time, the shifter is seized, and it's, it's seized in not the fun gears, it's seized in the middle gear, like a three or a four out of seven. So it's kind of like a fixed gear bike. But in this bike's case, it's more like a shit gear bike. Not really good at going fast, not really great at going slow. Perfect in the middle, sort of, if you can get there. So first things first, I'm the realist. Can you quote that lyric? I swapped out the shifter to a paddles clicky style Shimano shifter. And because I'm kind of slutty, I splurged on the handbrake shifter combination because the old handbrake, well, it looks like they put it in a bag filled with rocks and then beat another handbrake with it. But to get it all on there, I pulled off the original grip and the original shifter, slid the new Shimano shifter in, and then slid the original grip back on. And that's about the time I realized this isn't gonna work. The original grip on the left hand, well, it's bigger. The original grip on the right hand, because it includes the twist shift area, it's smaller. So now my hand doesn't really fit on there, but I took care of that by getting on Amazon and arranging by Sketchiest, the, the coolest way to search I found over the years. And that's the story of how we ended up with the Hapla Bees. Happy Bees, Happy Bees. It's like Applebee's, but in China. And they make handlebar grips. Same thing, basically. Mm, they've got a little bit of a chemical smell. Do these things say they cause cancer in California? Mm, no, no, they don't. I bet that's the gift. You never know when the cancer is gonna strike from these things. Any second now. I also went ahead and replaced the original shifter cable. And I just think it's gonna be easier to replace all that nonsense than unpack that suitcase of emotional damage. Next up on our to-do list is to figure out why the pedal assembly doesn't really wanna move. As you can see from these rust stains, clearly something's going on in there. Well, that pretty much explains it. Shocked, but not surprised. There was quite a bit of rust on the bearings. After a good brake clean and wire wheeling, they came up great. Well, yeah, they're here. Maybe they're not great, but they exist. And a little bit of grease made everything spin really nice and smooth, perfect for what my body desires. Although honorable mention goes to this little guy. I like how it just hangs out here. Kind of like some sort of tetanus booby trap. Now that we've got this bike probably working better, hopefully, it's time to, you know, make it look the part. To start, we're gonna clean up the chrome best we can. My trick to removing rust from chrome is to take aluminum foil, dip it in water, and rub it all over in that surface. This process will help reduce what the pitting damage has done, but it won't get rid of it entirely. It does get rid of the staining really well. As you're doing this, you can hear the grittiness change of the aluminum foil. Once it starts getting really smooth and gliding sounding, I like to take the foil and put it to a new crunchy section. While this is a little bit labor intensive, keep at it for 15, 20 minutes. You're gonna be left with some awesomeness. And now that we've got the chrome looking, well, less awful, we're gonna do the same thing and debadge it, or the bare minimum, desticker it. I know, I know, you're probably fond of the weirdly Margaritaville style graphics on this bike, but unfortunately, they're either dry cracked, uh, destroyed, or not even close to straight. So we're gonna remove them. 
my preferred method of removing old stickers or pinstriping from cars or whatever needs stickers removed from is to use one of those rubber ball wheel drill spinny things. That's actually the technical name for it. 74.2% sure. I'm gonna take these stickers off caveman style. I just slather my rear end up with some goo gone, then using a utility blade or a straight razor to try and slide between the graphic and the actual paint. Not only does the goo gone help remove the adhesive, it kinda acts like a lubricant here and keeps things gliding. At the last second, I decided to keep one of the Moon Dog stickers. Just something to remind this old girl what kind of heritage it had. Whatever a Moon Dog is, it's one of them. So now we're gonna take it out for one more ride. After some careful video review of our first attempt on the bike, well, I realized that video wasn't great. It is beautiful out. It's actually perfect. So I'm gonna strap you to my chest this time, see if it comes out even better. All right, just look at that. Going like the going's never been going before. It's got gears now and stuff. It doesn't feel like it's on fire. With a bike like this, the world is your bicycle oyster. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Yeah, I got it. Oh, you, no, no, yeah, no. And now with the pedals all lubed up, it just glides down the road. Yeah, perfect. It's just me and nature. Nature and I, actually. It's uh, grammatically correct that way, I believe. Not really sure. Don't even care. Just taking all the sights. And that concludes the story, nay, saga of the Kaluna Moon Dog Bicycle Revival. But if you want to see even more of a bicycle restoration, well, I've got you covered. This is a 1948 Hawthorne bike that I've been tinkering and videoing on in my free time. And if you want to see that, get subscribed and wear those shorts that you know I like. That'll definitely help your chances, like a lot. But if you didn't like this video, weird flex that you're still here, but I'll try harder next time. Totally. Nailed it. I'll nail it the next time. Always. Yep. Next, just stay tuned.